and as you can see on the screen here the Carolina Hurricanes are your reigning defending Stanley Cup champions just gonna tweet out the link real quick that way people can follow along and then we'll be good to go So that's live. And I'll tweet it on the Prospects account. We had a lot going on today. Alright, so just got to tweet this out on the Prospects account, but I will click continue. Your Carolina Hurricanes are the Stanley Cup champs. San Jose moving up in the lottery, that's good for us. Uh, means the Metro teams don't get the first overall pick this year. And there we go, we're good to go. I did say that I was going to um, skip through all this stuff and start it next season. Uh, I was a little busy today, one of my classes finished up and uh, so I didn't get a chance to do that. This is really the first time I've had to kind of relax today. Alex Ovechkin retiring with exactly 1,600 games played. 964 goals, that's obviously a record. He and Sidney Crosby having Hall of Fame careers. Backstrom and Bergeron also probably Hall of Fame bound. Jordan Stahl calling it a career as well. And I don't see any other former Canes. Let's check the goalies here. Martin Jones, Antti Ranta, Jake Allen, Peter Mrazek, calling it quits as well. So I hope you all are doing well. As for me, this is a pretty stressful week since all my classes are finishing up. So I'm trying to s stream this every night to, you know, get just a bit of a break from schoolwork. But as you can see here, one of my Hurricanes coaches and a coach, two coaches for the Charlotte Checkers are up or have retired. Um, yeah, so that Checkers statement today was uh, something for sure. Oh, I didn't mean to hit points. That was something. So Canes winning the Stanley Cup and President's Trophy. And they did it against Anaheim in a sweep. Chris Miracle with a shutout in game four. Owen Anderson winning the heart. Congrats to him. Thomas Chabot, Patrick Kane, uh, whoever that is. Sebastian Ajo winning the Conn Smythe. Canes and Cannons winning the Vesna. Congrats to him. Or them. I don't know if it's actually a him. And last season, the or this season, Canes and Cannons and Dan McLaughlin winning the William M. Jennings together as the goalie tandem who allowed the fewest goals against. Michael Goodrow winning the Masterton, so uh, that's good as well. JT winning his second straight Selkie. Owen Anderson also winning the Ted Lindsay, and then Tommy Watson winning the Rocket Richard. So plenty of created players taking the league by storm right now. And we're going to go to the draft. So obviously we have the 31st overall pick in the first round since we won the Stanley Cup doesn't appear that there's any great players here oh a low elite I mean I gotta pick this guy our scouts rank him 22nd so that's nine picks ahead of where he is right now Kenny Hull obviously a pretty good hockey name uh, goal scoring pro release and a hard wrist shot so he's definitely a sniper well yeah character is a bit of an issue which is mm, not the best and that may be why some teams have kind of gotten a little bit on edge about him. But I can't argue with low elite, especially late in that first round after I'm pretty sure everybody that was drafted ahead 
Now there was another low elite. This guy's a 68 overall, though. That's a really solid pick for my team. Moving on to pick 62. This is the last pick in the second round. There are no gems in this draft that my scouts were able to find. Um, again, though, here's a low elite left winger. Offensive instincts, playmaking ability are good strengths. Character is a, an issue once again. Uh, lots of left wings in this area of the draft. Although this guy's ranked 56th. It doesn't seem like character's an issue. He's also low elite, so two low elite left wingers. Now we have a pick 26th in the third round, so this is 88th overall. So we did have an extra third round pick. Um, I know I've drafted a lot of forwards so far, but it does seem that this guy is the best player available, at least according to our scouts. Uh, our scouts rank him three picks ahead of where he was supposed to go. Characters of strength, which is great. Skating, obviously an issue that is going to need to be worked on. Medium top nine isn't the greatest pick, but I'm okay with it. We'll live. <laughs> All right, so I see a low top 4D already, which is a, that's, you know, that's pretty solid. Um, <laughs> sorry, a friend of mine texted me something funny. I do see the low top 4D. I like that. Mobility, skating, and foot speed, again, issues. This guy's 20. I like that shooting and puck skills and senses are very good, but that skating is going to be an issue. And at age 20, I think I'm actually going to pass up on that and take Philip Larson here. Medium top 9 forward again. So pick 124, this is the last pick in the fourth round. Just kind of hoping for really anything at this point. Um... We'll see potential, see what's going on. I did see that the player who we projected to be a bust got picked right before us. Um, seems like there's plenty of forward talent in this draft. Andre Kuv Kuvalik, I'm pretty sure is how you pronounce that. Obviously a project, my goodness. But that's a good seventh round pick, I think, if there's nothing else available. What I do like is that there is a overage right winger here. I have picked a lot of right wingers in this draft, but medium top six forward potential could mean that he could be a very good pick. So I've exclusively drafted ring wingers in this draft. So let's see if there's anything else available that I could possibly swing. There's a center available. Mm, I don't love that. In all honesty, this guy is like a sure deal. I think I'm going to pick him. I like that potential. And I think that could pay off. All right. I've yet to draft a goalie. Um, I don't love any of the goalies. I haven't loved any of the goalies available. Yeah. Based on potential, is there anything better? There really isn't. So this David Stapleton guy, that's not worth drafting. I'm just not going to take a goalie in this draft. Um, low top nine forward that's pretty bad they did say that this was supposed to be a weaker draft class i've liked most of my picks so far but um you know i do understand that it could be a weaker draft class it's definitely not as deep i was able to find a lot of really good players last year pretty sure it was last year at least and then connor hunt i think i'm just gonna pick him see what happens Low top 60, yeah. So the last two picks in this draft weren't great, but most of the other picks were solid. And in a draft that was supposed to be a weaker draft, I think we came out ahead and did well. So my associate coach and my head coach are unexpiring deals. My goalie, NHL goalie coach and then the AHL's associate and assistant coach have left. 
Ben Assels has done a great job with us. Obviously, we won, we won the Stanley Cup, so I'm not going to mess this up. I do want to keep this guy around as an associate coach as well. He's an A-, minus, but I don't think I can do that. But I definitely want to keep my NHL head coach going on because, obviously, you know, if you win the Stanley Cup, you're going to want to keep your coach around. So scouting now. I'll just re-sign all these scouts. Pretty much, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with my scouting department. Um, I feel like I could do better in the USA. That may come back to bite me, but I don't think it will. I also think I could do better in Russia. And I think that's everybody that needed a, to be re-signed. I can't do better in Europe, and I haven't picked anybody from the DEL that I know of, but it's always good to scout that league, because there's typically a lot of really good middle round talent uh, from the DEL. So... Here we are. Big Sam wants a big contract. We're going to give it to him six years at whatever, ho however much he wants. Wanted. Same with Evan Stansel. I like that move. Tevo Teravainen. How well has he done these past few years? Um, yeah. That's, that's an instant re-sign. Josh Bean. Holmquist doesn't want to sign. I've been kind of disappointed with his production. I'm going to qualify LaPierre. Let's do this. Let's go to centers now. So these are all of my expiring prospects and players. Soderblom, you have been great these past few years, but it's time for me to usher in a new era with my AHL team, the Charlotte Checkers, who might not even be the NHL affiliate or the AHL affiliate of the Carolina Hurricanes in the next game. Um, anybody else? I don't love any of this, so I think I'm actually good. Yeah, guys being at like 22. Like, 67 overall, that's pretty good, but he's 22. There's no way that he's going to get any better, you know? Sorry, give me one second. So, I think I'm good. In that regard, Luke Henman, I think I'm going to also say no to that contract extension. Same with this Hamelinen player. Uh, right wingers now. Webdo wants a contract. We're going to re-up him. Bodie, I'm going to say no to re-signing. And definitely going to sign Skylar Dubnik, who was a second round pick. But other than that, I think I'm going to let this prospect... Walk to free agency. Evan Oda, fifth round pick, low top nine. Yeah, he's never going to make the NHL. I feel like I could do better than Bean. We'll see. So, Jeremy Biakabatukov wants a contract. McAuley does not. Okay. Definitely want to give Gertzen a contract. He was my uh, first round pick two years ago. And Villeneuve will qualify. He should sign. Um, definitely going to sign Chris Miracle. Tutin. Let's see, goalies. Uh, I have. I'll have three goalies in Charlotte next year. Yeah, I definitely want to sign this guy, and then I'm going to let go of Hawk next season. Um, 
other than that, I think that's good on the goalie front. We have Bennington. I'm hoping that Chris takes over as the starter next year, but, you know, either way, that's a great goalie tandem. Uh, we'll go to unsigned. Obviously, I have Jilson, Mats Jilson, the one goalie prospect. Skaters. Ooh, Martindale. He's 20 years old. 72. Yeah, he's medium top six forward potential, which isn't, or medium top nine, which isn't the best. But that's a player that could come into Charlotte next season. Um, so I really like that. And what what round was he picked in? Oh, he was a second round pick. That's not the best. Um, but I, I still like that he can come to Charlotte this year, and he might even have some playing time. So Martin Martindale, I love it. Uh, that has to go on the list of one of my favorite NHL names. Any player with the last name Goalie is going to be great. John Johnson. <laughs> Harry Wolf was probably my favorite name that I've seen in these NHL games. Um, but yeah, let's see. Most of these players should sign. Okay, so my head coach is back. That's the best thing that could happen for this team. And the associate coach is back. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. Um, Teravinen has accepted. Evan Stansel, Big Sam, Chris Miracle, Lapierre. So it seems like everybody is joining the team. Everybody is happy. We'll send to free agency now. And looks like the scouts should all be signing. I've never seen a scout not sign. Like I've no, I've just offered them the right amount of money every time, and they've always been like, "Yeah, cool, bro." Um, man, that Charlotte news is kind of crazy, but not terribly surprising considering if you follow the Canes Prospects account, I did tweet about this. I retweeted some stuff uh, in early March. And I feel bad for the guy that I retweeted because he's he got a lot of hate for that at the time from Canes fans who just like couldn't believe it. And I mean, Canes fans still can't believe it. I don't blame him. He got a lot of unjustified hate. There is no coach, assistant coach, that is good for goalies, which is unfortunate. Kind of have to pick this guy. Oh, you want hella money. I also, I mean, like, judging from the, um, the article that the News and Observer had, it, it also kind of seemed like the owners didn't really, like, get along. Like, they couldn't work together. So, like, as terrible as that is, like, Yeah, it's just, it's really awful either way, but like, I don't know what you can do. I think it'll be okay, Every everything will be fine. Obviously it's gonna suck not having our AHL affiliate close by, but it'll all work out in the end. Um, scouting. I hate doing this on stream. It's so boring. I'm sorry. Uh, I needed a USA and Russian scout. Look at that. I said I could do better in the USA, and what do you know? A minus for the USA. Easy. And Russia, I still can't do better than a C, and I actually am going to bring back the same scout, which kind of sucks, but whatever. I improved in one capacity, and hopefully it ends up paying off. Alright, now I need to find out what this NHL team needs. Obviously don't need a goalie. I'm good at center. Um, may consider putting Lapierre on the left wing, we'll see. And Gunnar, once he gets qualified. I think I'm good at forward, actually. Defense, one, two, three, four, five. 
I need a good defenseman. Whew, Hamilton, I didn't realize he had three years left. Um, that's gonna suck. Uh, yeah, my defense is aging here. Solani's getting better, which is great. But I do need a legit defenseman. I didn't realize that the team was not doing that well in terms of defense. So, uh, that would have been cool, but he is a free agent. Bean might be the best player available still. Libor Hayek is a defensive defenseman. I'm okay with bringing Jake Bean back. Five years is a little much. Let's give you three. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a strange uh, first pair for the Canes next year. We really don't have like that true number one defenseman. I'm kind of hoping that Solani can develop into that guy. But right now I think I'm good. Let me uh, just see if there's any good prospects available. Probably not, but never hurts to check. Was this guy one of my picks? No, he wasn't. And that's the one signing I'm going to make. Good pick. Uh, we'll advance a couple days, see what happens. My NHL goalie coach does not want to sign. Okay, my AHL associate coach signs, and the assistant coach signs. I do need a goalie coach for next year. So, that's kind of rude of that guy to not uh, want to sign with my team. Whatever, we'll just get the best available goalie coach. Or the best available coach and turn him into a goalie coach. And I'll just offer him a lot of money. We're way over budget in the coaching department, but I don't think that matters. I've seen some sims when it where it does matter and some where it doesn't. I don't know. But we got the USHL scout and the uh, Russian scout, so that's solid. We got the prospect, Jake Bean... Zach Wierenski heading to Vancouver, Thatcher Demko heading to Columbus. Don't know if that makes the Metro better. The goalie coach does sign though. Uh, Tori Krug, that'd be interesting. 88 overall, age 35, he's still an elite. I would have to give up Dwayne Landry, a center prospect and a first round pick. Chat, what do we think? We'll take a look at Krug one more time. 48 points last season. Pretty much consistently above 30 points. He's actually, you know, consistently a, like a 40 to 50 point guy other than this one season. Give up Dwayne Landry, a 68 overall center prospect. There's his stats for you. And a first round pick. I could also show my center depth. And here. Yeah, that's that that makes no sense for me to not trade him. So Mr. Landry with the franchise but I'm gonna say yes to this deal oh I accepted <laughs> um he gives me a legitimate number one defenseman which I don't have because Klingberg's down to an 86 now even if he goes down to like an 87 86 that's still great and better than all of my defensemen um, I do have to make a trade. Uh, I have to trade a defenseman now, though. Because right now I have... Let's see, in terms of overall, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.
Hamilton last season had 31 points. Solid. Julius Honka last season. He's three years younger. Obviously not going to be as big of a force in the offensive zone. But three years younger. Oh, I'm going to get so much hate for this. No trades were found. Okay. Let's see if I can do it. I don't love either of those moves. People are going to hate me for this. But Dougie Hamilton is 33. He's down to an 83 overall. He was an 86 last season. And if he just keeps getting lower, then that's going to be really bad for me. I literally just got a first round pick back. So, I end up getting Tory Krug and I think a third round pick, along with Anaheim's first, for a prospect. I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me, but it makes sense in my head. I, I did need to acquire a number one defenseman. Jake Bean has accepted his offer as well. Victor Olafsson heading to Chicago, or to St. Louis from Chicago. I also always trade with Anaheim. They're like my go-to trade team because they're out of division. They always want what I have, <laughs> and they always have their first, so. D Dmitry Timoshev heading to Boston. Nashville gets a second, two seconds. So Boston improves after trading Tory Krug away. I'm going to decline all further trades. I don't want to make any more moves and give up any more assets. Alex Kerfoot. I can't remember. I think it's this sim. Yeah, I, I traded for Kerfoot, and he didn't help my team. So I'm going to say no to that. We have the same coach. He didn't fit anywhere in that coach's scheme other than on the penalty kill. So it just doesn't make sense. Um, I think Hamilton also wasn't a good fit for my coach, um, which is strange, but Honka was a much better fit, like, everywhere on my team, so I kind of had to do that. William Carlson heading to Detroit. Vegas is really just, they've been bad so far uh this sim which is really interesting you know vegas is still pretty good in real life um it's kind of funny how different teams sim uh okay now i don't love this <laughs> all right cool So, here are my lines. I like seeing Patrick Cristola um, doing well. He didn't really do all that well in the NHL. He's still not doing that great in the NHL, but maybe playing with Suzuki and Taravine and I'll help him out. That's a really good third line. This fourth line's really good, too. I kind of wish that I could get McCallum a better spot right now, but if Suzuki doesn't improve... He's actually done really well in the NHL. 42 points last season. Um, that fourth line's just not going to cut it. Huh. Okay. So it doesn't appear that Krug is a good fit on that line. I really want Solani to get better. 
Okay, so Kirby isn't a very good fit on this team. But whatever. I think this will be fine. Goaltending, here we go. Let's try putting Chris as the starter, see what happens. Riley Kidney, a first round pick, and Anthony Honka are my scratches. Power play units look fine. Um, penalty kill looks to be a concern. Uh, Solani is killing penalties. He's double shifting. Don't want to do that. Oh god. I just got sent a tweet. We'll do that. Um, Solani. Just putting Klingberg here makes it worse. I'm gonna have to do it. Give me one sec.
Alright, sorry about that. You gotta be FaceTiming, you know, social distance. You gotta FaceTime your loved ones, and uh, so, gotta do that. Um. Oh god, I don't know how to answer this. Also, I'm gonna do a plug on stream. Um, if you guys follow Inside AHL Hockey on Twitter, their writer Tony uh, did a really good article about you know the pending move to Chicago for our AHL affiliate. Um, obviously, the Checkers are still gonna be in Charlotte, but the rumor is that they'll be Florida's affiliate. So I would definitely check out uh, his article. It seems like a really good deal. I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet because, you know, I've obviously been on stream and he posted it just a few minutes ago, but Tony does some really great work. Um, and I think a subscription to his site is only like $3 a month or something like that. It's really cheap and uh, he has a really great staff there too, so shameless plug. Okay, so we don't know anything about this draft. It's really weird. Really, really weird. We don't know a whole lot about the top picks in this draft, which is strange, but we do know the team is first in the division. Patrick Pristola is back. Uh, it seems like a weird trade to make. Seventeen, nineteen, or nine and three is a pretty solid record. It seems like the Metro is kind of having a bit of a down year, um, but you know I could be wrong. Uh, seems like the Canes are doing really well though. I, I'm really happy about that. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I, I like how the team's doing. I don't like two losses in a row, but I like that we're first in the division still think you know you got to beat the teams that are be below you and in this case you got to beat everybody but especially teams like you know the capitals and the rangers who i saw were chasing us for a little bit um man three straight wins though five to one win and then an eight to seven shootout win um i don't love that chris miracle is out but hopefully he'll be back soon but we got five straight wins now four of which were against metropolitan teams so that's a good way to kind of uh you know, assert dominance in the in the division here. And then, then another win. I didn't see if we beat the uh, Lightning, but I did see, you know, already beaten Montreal. Heading into the new year with a win, too, with that win against the Caps. Um, I don't like that. Michael Matheson sucks in real life. Changed my mind. <laughs> Chris Miracle is back. So welcome back to the team, Chris. Gotten me you into the streaming mood. It's fun. I'm not gonna lie. It, it is a lot of fun. Um I, I enjoy doing it. Uh broken toe again for Chris. I enjoy doing it. Um gives me something to do besides schoolwork, um, because I've been focusing on that a lot lately. The New York Islanders have fired Keith Lee. As their coach. I know it's Lee's, but the Islanders didn't want to bask in his glory. Streaming's fun. I enjoy it. Um, I couldn't do this for a living, though. It's crazy. I would need to have water by my side all the time, because, I mean, if you stay around for the whole thing, you'll just hear my throat just get absolutely destroyed, because I, I need water, but I don't want to break the stream. <laughs> Yeah. 
You know what? I kind of want to fire my coach just so I can hire Keith Lee as my coach, but we're doing so well that it would probably screw up the team really badly. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just also trying to read this article because I am legitimately curious to hear like the perspective of a guy who knows the AHL. I mean, Tony knows what he's talking about. Canes are kind of on a roll here, though. Let's see, I'm trying to count, which isn't the best. It looks like six straight wins heading into the All-Star break. We still don't know anything about the top seven other than one player. Uh, so that's not good. We have two busts in this draft, not too surprising. McCallum is back. I like that. McCallum seems to be doing well. Oh, here's a good quote from uh, the chairman of the Chicago Wolves from this article. I'm going to plug real quick. Wherever Don Waddell was, I'd love to be affiliated with him. He knows the game, he knows the players, and he likes to see his players win. Winning two championships with him in the past was fun, and we'd like to keep doing it. Hopefully we'll get something done. Um, obviously the guy has pretty pretty high regard for Don Waddell. Svetch is out with a concussion, but only for like four days, so cool. Martin Martindale, no! <laughs> um... Yeah, it is a desire to be cutting costs, but there's like a lot of factors in play as well. Um, yeah, also Chicago's pretty much always a contender for the Calder Cup, so it's not terrible. But um, man, that that statement that Charlotte released today, this is tinfoil hat Matt here, definitely read like it was crafted to piss off Canes fans like to make the Canes seem like bad guys and it succeeded because everybody's tweeting at Tom Dundon who has never responded to a Canes fan never liked a single tweet in his life I'm like this will show him and I'm just like <laughs> they're tweeting at the Canes and it's just some guy <laughs> I don't get it man I don't it did. It made Canes fans so mad. But, I mean, it sucks for local hockey. It does. And I really do feel for Checkers fans at the same time as well. Because, you know, they're losing their team. Or they're not losing their team, but the Canes are leaving. And, you know, as long as Charlotte's been in the AHL, the Canes have been their affiliate. And so it just, you know, it's tough. It really is tough. But, I mean, they'll still get an affiliate. I'm hoping that the Canes will come back to Charlotte eventually. It was really nice getting to see my team's prospects just an hour and a half away. If The one positive that I can think about this is that I believe Chicago has a good enough facility for where we can has some of their games broadcast on like NHL Network because I know NHL Network did those games last year um, so that'd be nice being able to see you know Charlotte nationally I think Jason Shia will stay in Charlotte so I'm wondering if that affects his um, like if he would get called up still if Forsland is on a national broadcast or what that deal would be but you know I have no idea what would happen either way the Canes are killing it lately once again, an eight-game win streak. This team is just lighting it up. They're just smacking the NHL around. Bob Cobb is back for Charlotte as well. His AHL broadcasts are fantastic. Like, he's so passionate about the Checkers, loves the franchise, and I'm kind of wishing... Like, I'm glad that Zach Stort Stortini was, has a coaching job in the OHL now. But man, that guy actually had some really interesting topics to bring up on the broadcast, and I thought they worked really well together as a team. Um, but Stratini is now 
coaching uh, Blake Murray. Josh Grantham, a created player heading to Toronto. Trade deadline is almost upon us. I honestly think this team is fine. 43 wins at the trade deadline. 44 now at the trade deadline. 12 points ahead of the next team in the division. We're going to sim. Once again, the last game of the season is against the Buffalo Sabres. Dwight Woe is eligible to play in the next game as well. So, from the Chicago Wolves side of things, just again, I'm reading this article because <clears throat> it's obviously an important moment for the Canes. It seems like, you know, the Canes and the Wolves both want to make this work, and the Wolves want more focus and, you know, the ability to field a competitive roster every year, and... With the Canes, they're getting some of the best prospects from one of the best teams in the NHL. And they have the budget to get AHL veterans and good AHL players as well. So it seems like kind of a win-win, um, at least from the AHL team standpoint. Because, I mean, a lot of the guys the Checkers signed to contracts this year didn't work out. There were a couple that were all right, but ugh, it was kind of ugly for a minute. So it sucks. It does suck. Um if the Canes are no longer going to be affiliated with the Checkers, but, like, you got to look on the bright side as well. My God, Buffalo got killed in the first period. Patrick Pristola with two goals, Tori Krug, Riley Kidney with a goal, and then Dominic Bach as well. Aho and Big Sam with a big goal uh, scoring in the second period. And third period, Optimistic Kaniac adding a goal, just like an insult to injury. So, unfortunately, Trevor, your team is kind of just kind of got screwed there. They might not even be a playoff team this year. Um, again, I don't think I can swing a trade, my man. We'll take a look. We'll take a look. If anybody else is watching this and they would love to see where their player is and how they're doing, just leave a comment and we'll get it taken care of. My God, Aho and Optimistic Kaniac, 118 and 119 points. 73 goals. Oh my God god yeah that's a career season all right what's hilarious is that he he like outscored himself and had like only 45 assists that's a career high too golly look at that that's a bit of an unsustainable 18.7 percent shooting percentage but that's probably part of the reason why aho he had 96 assists my god Bro, I get it. I get being busy with school. I've been working on math homework for four days straight. <laughs> Just math. Um, my business calculus class is finishing up. Um, tomorrow's like my first, like, quote, free day. But it, it's still a crazy day, man. So, man, that's a great season from Sebastian Ajo. So, that's huge. Andrei Svechnikov, 98 points. Big Sam with 89. 80 points for Evan Stansel. Solid season for every everybody else. Tori Krug had 44 points. That was excellent. That was an excellent trade. Oh, who did you get traded to? You got traded from Tampa. Tampa traded you the year before they won the cup. I'm trying to remember who they traded you to. Let's just see. I want to see how Hamilton did with... Uh, Hamil uh, Anaheim 30 points so Krug outscored him that's fine that's a good trade we'll take a look you are a goalie oh check how boss Buffalo did Trevor 76 points not a career year but still a great year um god I don't remember who you were drafted by or who you were traded to but I know you're a goalie so I'm just gonna keep scrolling and see Ryan Ellis doing all right. Calgary kind of sucks. Chris Miracle was hurt a lot this season. That's right. Um, yeah, they're not 
The sabers aren't doing well, man. I don't know what it is. Uh, let's see. I want to say it was St. Louis, but I don't want to uh, say that and then just be wrong and have to go through all this again. Carter Metz with a great season. Uh, Kurt with a pretty okay season. Not great. The Islanders. Kane Stutz. Man, someone get him away from the island. Kane's and Cannons and Dan McLaughlin both having great seasons. Pittsburgh. It's not to Pittsburgh. You got traded to St. Louis. Okay, so I was right. So here are your stats, Cameron. 31, 24, and 3 record. 4 shutouts and a 921 save percentage. I'll also show you your career stats while you're here. So you're 169, 92, and 17 in your career with 19 shutouts and a 915 save percentage. Um, you've been a starter for three seasons. Obviously, you know, your stats are going to be a little inflated because you haven't been a full-time starter for all your career. And the four seasons prior, you know, your career high was 33 starts. So still quite good, though. Um, but yeah, those are your stats. Pretty solid career so far. Um, I don't think St. Louis has been all that great. They made it to the conference final last year, I want to say. And I'm pretty sure you were a big part of that. Wow, 45, 21, and 5. That's a big record. Yeah, playoff stats. Yeah. So you've, you've made... You've had you had three playoff starts with Tampa, um, or appearances, and then um, in St. Louis you've done much better. So it seems like St. Louis is pretty much consistently a contender. And now we're gonna go to the playoffs, folks. Yeah, I mean I don't know if you saw, but the Islanders suck in this franchise mode. And they, they decided they didn't want to bask in the glory of their head coach, Keith Lee. So, I'm disappointed. Canes versus Rangers, first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, and uh, it's going to be Blues versus Jets for Canada. First period, a little bit of a barn burner going on. Sebastian Ajo scoring first, Big Sam with a big goal. Svechnikov scores his third goal. That chases Gustafsson out of the game. Optimistic Kaniac scores on Brassois. Brady Shea getting that revenge goal. Fairly calm period compared to the first. No goals. And then the third period, the Canes win. Optimistic Kaniac's goal ends up being enough. Caldwell scoring. Pristola scoring. Kane to restore that two goal lead. Or that three goal lead. And the Canes end up winning the game 7-4. to four. No shortage of offense in that game. Wow. Tory Crew got with a pulled groin until May 3rd, so he's out until the second round. Ajo had four points in that game. My goodness. Losing the number one defenseman uh, does hurt, though, so that's not good. First period, game two. Doesn't matter. Big Sam with two big goals in the first period. What what did we nickname him last time? Was he named the Duck Hunter? I think that was my nickname for him because he, he was tearing it up against the Ducks. But so there's Big Sam with two big goals. Second period, Kane's out another. Andre Svechnikov scoring. In third period, we got a shot out with Optimistic Kaniac scoring another goal as well. Chris Miracle pitching the shutout here. Big Sam and Optimistic Kaniac each with two points in that game. Landon McCallum is out with an injured leg as well. It's a bit of a, it's not as big of an injury, but it's still a pretty big injury. He's out until the 16th, um, so he could come back in game four. He might only miss this game here. Second, or this is game three. We're playing at MSG. The Rangers are going to get up uh, two nothing in that first period, thanks to goals from Kako and Panarin. Second period, Kane's tie up. Big Sam and Optimistic Kaniac with some big goals. Third period, Canes win. Uh, Tuoma Solani, uh, the defenseman, scoring a bomb from the point. Canes win 3-2 and are on the verge of sweeping the Rangers. Evan Stansel's out with a pole groin as well until April 20th, so the injury bug has not been kind to us this series. The regular season has ended. Lana McCallum is 
Heck, Charlotte did not make the playoffs. Um, I want to see... Yeah, man, I don't know what it is, but the offense from this team just cannot get it done. So, first period game four. Kings can walk away with a first round sweep. Noel Gunler and Big Sam scoring goals in the first period. There's been a lot of scoring in bunches uh, this series, like in pairs especially. Second period, my goodness. Svechnikov and Big Sam scoring. Tommy Watson getting a goal for New York. Uh, Pinelli scoring as well, but Klingberg and Suzuki give the Canes a four-goal lead. Third period, Canes are going to add another one, just smacking the Rangers this series. Dominic Bach with the goal. Canes win 7-3 twice this series, and will move on to the second round. Hell of a series. Hell of a series. Evan Stancil's back. That's a pretty big one. We had some significant injuries. The fact that we were able to sweep the Rangers without Krug is huge. Um, and this nice long break, I'm always a little worried about that, but it's all right. We're playing against Philly, so Philadelphia. Um, the playoff tree so far. So Ottawa beat the Devils. St. Louis moved on in seven games. Buffalo did not make the playoffs, unfortunately, Trevor. So, unfortunately, you will not be a playoff team this year. First period of Game 1. Game 1 in the second round against the Philadelphia Flyers. Tie game, Josh Hosang scoring on Chris Miracle. Jake Bean scoring. I'm sorry, Josh Bean scoring for the Carolina Hurricanes. Second period, nothing. Kings are getting outshot, 27-19, to 19, third period, doesn't even matter. Hamelainen scoring to tie the game, or no, scoring to take, yeah, to tie the game. No, to take the lead. Hayes ties it, Big Sam scores the eventual winner, and Andrei Svechnikov scores the insurance goal. I'm telling you, man, my brain is fried from doing all this math. I can't even do basic math anymore. Dominic Bach out with an injured groin until the 30th. Uh, that's a little unfortunate, but we could be getting him back by game three, if not probably game four. So, still alright. Still everything's okay, first period. Uh, Honka scores a goal for the Canes. Sammy Vatanen gets that revenge goal against the Carolina Hurricanes <laughs> with that uh, first period goal to tie the game. Second period, once again, nothing doing. Canes are getting outshot. Third period, still doesn't matter jake bean and the exorcist evan stancil with the goals canes win they have not lost a playoff game since the second round of last season they swept the sabers and then swept the um ducks then the rangers so this canes team man is crazy good Second, first period of game three. Optimistic Kaniak and Jake Bean scoring goals. Uh, Vladislav Nemestnikov cuts the lead in half. Second period, Optimistic Kaniak gets another goal. And then the third period, Taro Hamalainen scoring a goal. So big news for the Canes. It's a 4-1 to one victory in game three. The Kane train is just rolling along, man. Sebastian Ajo with one goal but 10 assists these playoffs. Once again showing that he was... He's deserving of all of the praise. Sean Couturier and former Hurricane Etu Lusterinen scoring goals for the Philadelphia Flyers. Canes come back, though. Patrick Pristola cuts the lead in half. Kerfoot restores the two-goal lead. And then once again, Ajo cuts the lead in half. Third period. The Canes are going to lose this game. Lusterinen scores, and then Evan Bouchard scores. So Canes, unfortunately, will not get the sweep. But we're going to move on to game four five just kidding tory krug is back now so that's big news for the canes tory krug is a huge addition to this roster first period optimistic kaniak and jake bean scoring evan bouchard and nolan patrick scoring for the flyers second period nemestikov scores from the face-off circle and then the third period, Canes lose again. The Exorcist Evan Stancil with a goal. Once again, Glosterinen and Bouchard are tearing it up. Moving on to game six. So Philly has clawed their way back in this series, winning two straight. Canes could advance, though. 
they could advance against the Flyers. First period, Optimistic Kaniac with a goal, Josh Hosang with another goal. So once again, we leave the first period tied. Second period, no score, very even in shots. Kings with a one-shot edge. Third period, Kings lose. Nolan Patrick scores, and we're going to game seven. Guys, don't blow another, don't blow another three nothing series lead. I can't take. I I could not take that. My heart, just, I could. My heart could not take that. First period, I like that. The Exorcist Evan Stansel with a goal. John Klingberg, with a goal as well. I believe that's his first goal in a little while. Second period. Oh God. Nolan Patrick with two goals, Tori Krug with a goal in the last minute 22 of that first second period to give the Canes the lead once again. We're going to uh, kind of quick sim through this last one here. Third period, Canes get a goal, Evan Stansel once again the being the exorcist. I know it's not against the Devils, but he's still great. And Kachuria, sorry, I had to read a text from my dad. Kane's win thanks to Evan Stansel's third period goal. They're moving on to the conference final. St. Louis did get swept, so that's unfortunate for them. That's going to be Kane's versus Senators in. It, it's a battle of, I think, two the two best teams in the league, or at least in the Eastern Conference, um, regular season-wise. Ottawa had three more overtime losses than we did. First period, Ottawa goes up to an early lead with Barbashev and Matthew Savoy getting goals. Sebastian Ajo does score on Kings and Cannons. Oh, I forgot how good their goalies were. Dang. Second period, it's a, uh, Will Looper scores and Eric Branstrom score for Ottawa. Bach and Optimistic Kaniac score for the Canes. Third period, oh, that's a good old-fashioned molly whopping right there. Barbashev, Cook, and Matthews score for the Sens. Jacob Slavin scores for the Canes. That's tough. That's tough. Tough loss in game one. First period, game two, Matthews and White score. Man, this Ottawa Senators team is actually good. Um, so that's a bit of a concern. 4 nothing, Cook and Matthews scoring. 5 nothing, Will Looper. Man, that's tough. Uh, this, this might be where the dream ends for the second Stanley Cup. Back-to-back -back cups might end here. Medium franchise right winger available in this draft. If I didn't have a great forward core, I'd consider trading up for that. Maximus Weber, that's a cool name. Projected to go 40th overall, but he is a gem. And Anaheim made the playoffs, so it's actually good. The pick We ended up trading our pick to somebody else, but the pick we got from Anaheim is going to be higher than uh, what ours was originally supposed to be. So, you know, it's a net win. Nothing in the first period. Kane's outshot the Sens 18 to 5, which means we're going to get scored on first. We didn't actually. We scored on them first, but Optimistic Kaniac scores, Konechny and Barbashev score, and then Gundler ties it late in the period. We're going to overtime. Matthew scores and Optimistic Kaniac scores just over a minute later. We're going to overtime. We're going to watch the OT. Man, look at that team, man. Kane's offense is better, but everything about those Sens is better. Kind of jealous of how they've been able to draft <laughs> defensemen, or at least get the defensemen. Alright. So, we have Ajo on the faceoff. He wins it back. Tori Krug with the puck now. Krug is pressured a little bit, but he finds a way. He's going to enter in the zone. Ooh, one timer on Canes and Cannons. And the game's going to glitch a little bit. Canes and Cannons passes it 
Svechnikov was interfered with out in front. The guy just tied him up nowhere near the puck, but you know, whatever. Brandstrom, and they, s no, they're waving it off. What happened? The goal is Looks like Matthews hits the goaltender. Looks like, yeah, it looks like Matthews interferes with Nedeljkovic, or not Nedeljkovic. Yeah, it actually seems to work. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't count it. It looks like it's goalie interference. So we play on in overtime. Canes catch a bit of a break there and avoid, for now at least, going down 3 nothing in the series. To Fabry. Fabry with the puck. Eric Brandstrom with it. Great save. Chris Miracle. Sebastian Ajo with the puck to Svechnikov. To Optimistic Kaniak. Carrying it into the zone. Svech shoots. Blocked. Solani is tripped in the, off in the defensive zone, and there's going to be a penalty. The Suns take on the offensive zone penalty. Evan Stansel with the puck, and he's going to turn it over, but the Canes are going on an overtime power play. Huge moment for the Carolina Hurricanes. It's just as blatant of a trip as you'll ever see one that day. I think that guy's name is Cook. Brady Cook with the trip. Oh, he wants to play some back. Jake Bean with it. Taravainen off the crossbar. Taravainen almost wins it for the Hurricanes. As you can see, though, Optimistic Kaniak and Big Sam both having great playoffs. Here we go. Back in the faceoff, it's Aho, Optimistic Kaniak, and Tevo Taravainen. Aho wins it back. Klingberg with the puck. Two Optimistic Kaniak. Puck was impeded with. It's going to be Klingberg and... Oh, they don't clear. Jake Bean, table turn home with an excellent stick with Klingberg blocked by his own man. Aho to Klingberg. To Optimistic Canyon. To Aho. Here we go. Shot blocked. Once again, Ottawa's doing an excellent job on the front. Go for like two minutes. My dad's gonna have to reset the Wi Fi. Uh, because I guess it's not working for him, it's working fine for me. But, um, ooh, another penalty coming up. I may just end the stream a little early tonight and then pick it up probably tomorrow night. Um, I do have some other work to do and I actually need to sleep tonight. So, yeah, that's a, that's a trick. So, Thomas Chabot with the puck now. Or in the penalty box, excuse me, not with the puck. Kane's out of 5 on 3 for the week, 50 something seconds. Ooh, shot, great save, Kane's in Kane's. Oh my goodness. What a save. Svechnikov with the puck. 5 on 3 for the Carolina Hurricanes for the next 40 seconds. Kind of shot blocked again. I don't understand. They, they get in their lanes every time. Oh my goodness. Svech with the puck. Andre Svechnikov to Evan Stancer. Suzuki, what a bad pass. Oh my gosh. Svechnikov has it. 15 seconds left on the 5 on 3. And then we go to a uh, power play for the next minute, I believe. Svechnikov to Krub. Krub shoots. Block the ball. Krub shooting. Tough angle shot. And Kendrick Hammonds makes a nice save. So if the Wi-Fi, or if the stream gets cut off, it's because the Wi-Fi doesn't work, isn't working right now. I'm sorry if that happens. I just want to let y'all know ahead of time, you know? Jake Bean with the puck. Um, he's going to make a nice bank pass to Table Terravano. Sebastian Ajo with the puck. Ajo 
dishes it back to Klingberg. Klingberg to Aho. It's a five on four power play now for the Kings. Jake Bean. Bean to Kaniak. To Aho. Up there's the Kaniak with a nice deflection in front. Kings and Cannons is just a brick wall this overtime. Nothing is getting past him. Power plays 0 for 2 so far tonight, including that one 5 one 3 That's tough. So probably time for a nice little rush, maybe two more depending on how it works. But Table Teravine with the puck. Do you have to miss the camera? Why did he make that play? All oh, the AI in this game, man. He could have he could have just had a shot, he could have had a pass, but he didn't either of those things. He tried to beat. Teravine, to off Mr. Kenny up to Teravine. To Aho, shooting, great save. Klingberg shot, great deflection by Aho. Teravine shoots safe. Aho, oh, oh, it was on the goal line. And the Kings can are not successful on the power play. Toriko turns it over to Shabbat. Shabbat to Austin Matthews. Shot saved by Chris Miracle. Svechnikov to Evan Stanton. Shot save. Was a, that was a heck of an effort by the Canes. I like the effort. I don't like the fact that we didn't score on the 5 on 3, you know? But either way, Evan Stancil's going to get tied up in the faceoff. Robbie Fabry has it. Will Looper with the puck now. Season 1, he was a Hurricanes legend. Chris Miracle makes a nice glove save, and we're going to have a faceoff in the King end. Aho, Big Sam, and Optimus Kaniak are top 5 in points. Matthews and Will Looper. Occupy the other spots. Luther to Fabry. Fabry scores. My oh God, I can't score on a five. I'm gonna close my laptop and close the screen on there. I'll pull up YouTube on my phone though, so I can read the comments there. That way. Maybe the Wi Fi will work. <sighs> the Canes are down three nothing in this series. Game. Thor, this is in Raleigh. <laughs> That's the season. Yep, yeah, Canes lose. I'm upset. We will sim to the draft. I'm going to end the stream tonight. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.